Well, all right, all right, all right, all right. Hello, hello, hello out there, everyone in Blog Talk Radio land, honey. Hey, what's going on, love? Honey, it is another glorious Wednesday, and you know what time it is, honey. So grab your crumpets because it's time to dish tea, and you're dishing tea, darlings, <laughs> with Big Meat. Hey, babies, how are you? Whew, it's 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 one of those days for me, honey. I'm I'm literally just walking in the door from the donut factory job. Um and yeah, I got some things going on there. So if I sound a little perclimped or whatever, it's because I'm I haven't had time to process the job yet. But it's not going to stop us here because we're gonna keep things moving forward and uh we're going to bring to you an excellent, excellent, excellent show today. Um, very, very, very informative, and I and I really believe this is something that will ignite you and spark you into action. At least that's my 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 purpose and my goal for this particular show. Um, so if you're listening by uh, by computer and wish to comment or want to call in on the on the uh, conversation or join in rather, please feel free to call in at three four seven. Two zero five nine one eight three. That's three four seven two zero five nine one eight three. I am now uh, sitting up here. It is hot in here. Okay, it's not really hot out. Well, it's hot outside, but it's not as hot as it usually is. You know, so we have a little relief, and that there is beautiful, and um, that there is all of that. So. Uh, with that being said, ha ha, let me say hello to all of you, my tea sippers out there. The chat room is now open, so if you want to chat over there, or as I call it, the tea room, please do feel free to do so over there. Just dish your tea over in there responsibly for me, please. Remember, this is the written word, and sometimes we tend to put our own inflections on the way people write and end up not being exactly how... Uh, how you took it may not be how the writer had intended. So all I'm asking is that you dish your tea over there responsibly, please. And uh, don't get upset cursing at the computer, ready to throw it out the window or this, that, and the third, because none of that would do anything, okay? Just understand that it's all right to disagree. Just don't be disagreeable, okay? And I'll be monitoring that. So if I see you over there cutting up, I will chop you. <laughs> yes, I will. I will chop you. And on that note, let me put my disclaimer right here. This show is for mature audiences, and the language and or subject matters are not appropriate for children or anyone who is not mature to handle the subject matters. So your listening discretion is advised. Again, your listening discretion is Advice. Now, those of you who know and are fans of the show, you already know I have a potty mouth, and I make no excuses for it, and I'm unapologetic about it. So if you're going to come up in here uh, and listen to the show, and you're at work or whatever, please govern yourselves accordingly, because none of you bitches are going to sit up there writing me the letters and saying I was at work and I got reprimanded or whatever listening to you. Uh-uh-uh, I'm not having it. Govern yourselves accordingly and consider. Consider yourselves warned. <laughs> okay? So, um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, show ideas, show topics, uh, uh, guest suggestions, or something that you would like to see, honey, please feel free to go to the Facebook page and you can leave it there. Uh, Facebook.com, of course, Dishing Tea with Big Meat. Understand that there are two pages up. Both of them are mine. Uh, but I go to the one that says entertainment. I go to I use that one more frequently than the one that says radio show. So please leave all this stuff over there. Um, Dishingtea um, dot com is coming soon. It's still under development. We want to make sure we get all that correctly and, and doing the right thing on that. Um, but until then, if you would like to send me a personal email or a dear meets letter that you want to talk about or want some advice, you can send it to Big Meat. At dishingtea.com. That's B I G M E A C H at dishingtea.com. Okay? So that there is absolutely wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Now, 
I do have my sponsors to thank. I'm going to call them by name right now. And as I try to do commercial breaks in between is when I'll give you the live feed of who they are. But I'm going to say hello to Georgia Peach uh, Restaurant and Lounge in the underground Atlanta, Trade Day Management and PR Firm, uh, Ferro's Treasure Box, Parisian Wine Productions, Each of the Dog Couture, Big Brothers Network, uh, the CABC, the Caribbean American Boys uh, Club Incorporated, Kissing After Dark, Above Consciousness Clothing, and Swirl Films. Thank you so much, because without you, baby, there is no me, okay? Now, let's get into today's show. Today's show, I titled it, The Extreme Explosive State of Black America, Okay, this edition of Dishing Tea will focus on the 15th anniversary of Atlanta's Black Gay Pride celebration. And within the confines of this Labor Day weekend long event, uh, there would be the must attend event of the weekend that would raise eyebrows, snatch your hair back, honey, make you mad, and even bring forth solutions. And that event will be the State of Black Gay America. Now, uh, I'm going to be here. My guests today are um, the founders, co-founders, and uh, possibly the one of the moderators of what this is going to be about. So today we're going to get into exactly what is the conference or the summit is all about. We're going to talk about its, its history. We're going to go to its present, and then we're going to project into the future what we think this is going to delve into. Um I know I have with me uh, the the wonderful, wonderful Miss Darlene Hudson is going to be on. Uh, I believe I have Mr. Gregory Allen with me, and I also have Pastor uh, Pastor Troy with me as well. Um, so, with that, without any further ado, let me uh, go in and let me bring everyone in. Right now, I'm going to say hello, darlings, hello, hello, and hello, hello, and hello, hello again. Is everyone here with me? I'm here. Hello? Okay, that's one. Yeah, I got you, baby. That's one. Uh, This is Pastor Troy. Okay, Pastor Troy, I got you. Okay, great. And, uh, oh, wait a minute, I put on somebody that didn't have a hand up. Hold on, let me put you back out, honey. Okay. Um, okay, good, good, good. Well, hello there, darlings. How are you? How art thou? What is going on in the world of you? <laughs> well, I just want to start out by thanking you for allowing us and inviting us to come on today. I've been looking forward to this and talking about the, the SDGA Summit, the State of Black Gay America. So let me appreciate you, Mr. Dick Meach. Um, oh, well, thank you, baby. For showing up and showing out. I like that. That's good. <laughs> okay, as you get to learn me, honey, you will realize I'm someone who, I, my, I say one of my hobbies is talking. And as long as I have a platform, honey, or someone that's willing to listen, and I think I have something to say meaningful, not to catch it meaningful, then, uh, you know, yeah, Meech is going to be Meech. Pastor Troy, how are you today, sir? I'm doing good, doing good. I want to echo what Darlene said. Thank you so much for having us on the show today. Um, Definitely we think this is a wonderful cause, so it gives us excitement to be able to talk about it. Oh, well, all right. Well, then let's start with you and and get this excitement bursting and bubbling over. And let's talk about the cause. Let's go right into the basics. Uh, of uh, State of Black Gay America. Let's go into it and let's tell the folks exactly what it is and what is its purpose. Well, I'll start off, Troy, and then you can chime in and add on to it. But the State of the Black Gay State of Black Gay America Summit is a one-day forum that happens Labor Day weekend. It's a forum where all of our local and national leaders and activists come together in a a discussion, and um, we share information, we, we work to stimulate discussion, and we identify, you know, solutions around economic, political, health, um, environmental, you name it, we're talking about it. Because it's whatever's important to 
the Black Day community, we want to make sure that there's a setting, that there's a form where we can have some opening dialogue, not to just talk about problems, but to also talk about solutions and things that are working and talk about our dreams and our vision. All right, all right. All right, Pastor Sir, did you have any echoes or echo, echoing statements on that? Well, no, I just uh, wanted to add that um, I, I definitely concur. I think the thing that got me involved from the beginning um, is, of course, you know, Labor Day weekend is such a celebratory time for Atlantans, um, especially the LGBTQ community here. And uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to uh, get your life, and while you're getting your life, you're able to get involved and get in the know when it comes to contemporary issues that affect us long after we're back in our respective places after September is over. Mhm, mhm, mhm. Right. Now, with the title of it being "State of Black Gay America," you know, of course, if, if anybody who follows any of the uh, political um, um, theories or anything that's that's dealing with uh, cultural events and and dealing with uh, economic empowerment. You know, this this seems to be a take on the Tavis Smiley state of the state of the Black Union. Uh, why was that so synonymous? You know, why is that uh, uh, a significant comparison uh, with Tavis Smiley? Was that done deliberately? And if so, has has Tavis been offered to come and either moderate or anything like that to to be an ally? Wow. Well, let me just say this. When Tavis was doing his um, tour of the state of black, I mean, the state of black America, yeah, I felt like that there was a missing voice in that conversation. And I know a couple of, uh, in particular, like Keith Walking was on board with him, but not in the capacity where he was caring, from my perspective, the voice from the community. And I wanted to create a forum to where we could just be at will to discuss our issues and talk about the solutions to some of the things that we're working on or should be working on. Um, I'm not going to say that it was a mimic of him, but I will say that um, in the back in the back of my head, I was thinking we need a forum um, Labor Day weekend. Anybody who knows me know that I've been since I've been living in Atlanta Black Gay Pride has always been on my radar, and I always wanted to carve out a period of time where people could come together and talk seriously about our issues since we're all kind of together anyway and invite new voices and new people into the place. Have Tavis Smiley ever been invited? No. Um, have I been invited to? No. Um, but, you know, respectfully, you know, he has his conversations that he even continues, not necessarily doing his comment anymore, but, you know, we're continuing with ours. So it has something to do with it, but not totally dedicated to, you know, trying to mimic something that he has had. I just wanted to have a forum and um, Extreme Entertainment approached me about, you know, his concerns, Gregory Allen's concern, and I said I think we should put together uh, not just a panel discussion or have a speaker. I want to have some dialogue. Let's take up four or five hours of the day, and let's talk about our business because the rest of the weekend, from Thursday on to that Monday, will be dedicated to exchanging information, people expressing themselves culturally, you know, partying, all of that. So um, kind of sort of yeah, but kind of sort of no, if, if you can accept that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, cool beans, cool beans. Well, see, for me... Um, even if it were a mimic, um, I thought that it was something that was needed anyway. Because now, let me pose this question because it maybe it'll sum up what I was about to say. Um, you mentioned Keith Boykin being on, you know, a, a part of the whole Tavis Smiley uh, entourage package that he had a, 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 with his particular aspect of it. But my question is, outside of Keith Boykin, and I can't think of Deborah's last name, who's on the um, Democratic National uh, Convention and all of that that she does, um, who are our national black leaders in our gay culture? And um, 
because a lot of us don't know the leaders outside of the local people that we know within our prospective states. Uh, but with this being this type of forum, I'm sure you, you've over the years you've reached out to those who are the national people so that it can educate our people who our leaders are so who we can turn to so we know who to rally with and this, that, and the other. Who are they? Well, um, I wanted to chime in. I think you bring up a wonderful point, Big Meech. The first thing that comes to mind for me is I think the summit is a wonderful opportunity to to kind of put a new spin on that and realize that we all have a responsibility to be leaders in our own communities. If we're exactly. part of the LGBTQ community, then um, so often we wait for people to speak for us. And mm-hmm. the summit is an opportunity where we can bring our own voice to the table and be heard. Now, certainly there are some, some national people who um, have, have paid the price, rightfully so, and a number of names come up. And the summit's going to be an opportunity to hear from them. Um, great like Mandy Carter, who has paved the way for right. years um, in, in equality issues for LGBT people and a number of other people. But I think that the, the other piece is that if we divorce um, the concept that we are not, we are all part of that conversation and we are all leaders. Interestingly, you asked a minute ago, uh, was it divorced from the whole Tavis Smiley piece? Historically, we've grappled with that question around how much of the black gay agenda is connected to the black agenda and how much mm. of the subset of the black agenda. And at what mm-hmm. point can we effectively be a part of the black agenda if we've not effectively itemized and grappled with the black gay agenda? Um, so I think these are right. These are questions that are right on target that are not one-shot, one-time answers. We have to keep grappling mm-hmm. with that. As the mm-hmm. culture politically changes and as the culture economically changes, our culture, the, the way we approach those questions also change. I like that. Yeah, that's that's very, very true. Very true. Very, very true. Now let's go into that because now this may seem like, uh, a picking a, picking a book out your nose kind of question. However, a lot of folks get caught up in it, and, and having serving, having have served on many different uh, boards and been represented, a better representative for many different panel discussions and and organizations where they were coming up with stuff. I'm a transgender activist, and every time we got to the table. And they they would outline their program. They you know we we're going to do this and we're going to have the youth summit and we're going to focus on and focus on and focus on and focus on this and blah blah blah. And then they say and we have transgender and we'll go transgender issues. And I said, well, what are the issues? And everybody got stumped. Well, you know, no, I, that's why I'm asking you, honey. You sitting up there saying this is a part of your your breakdown, honey. What are the trans issues? So I said all that to say this. With our, uh, the state of black gay America, exactly what are our issues outside of the superficial ones? That every, everybody can always say, well, you know, you know, HIV, AIDS is still an issue. And what are our specific issues that we need to target? And I know it, it, there's not, you know, we can't just number them because they're vast, but I'm sure we all have an idea of what we need to target. Well, well I, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, darling. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I don't. I'll come in. Go ahead, Troy. No, well, what I, I think I think that's a great point, but I think the first thing that comes up as a caution for me is that I don't ever want to overstate my boundaries and speak for someone else. I think a part mm-hmm. of the a part of the summit is to create a space where people can speak for themselves. So, as a black gay man, what I consider to be primary issues may be very different than as a trans woman or a trans man, um, or mm-hmm. as a religious or as a a pastor in our community. The issues that come up on my radar may be different than someone who is a practicing Buddhist or a practicing Muslim. Um, But Mm -hmm. the the, the issue becomes how do we create community where all of our voices are heard? So if you're asking me personally, what are some of the things that should be on all of black gay America um, radar screens? Certainly what's going on in Washington has amazing implications, and I don't think we really realize the raising of the debt ceiling conversation, how much that's going to filter down. Um, 
to those of us that are in uh, mid middle class America and that those that are right at poverty or even in poverty or below poverty, then issues mm-hmm. around even uh, even activism when it comes in community activism. How is this whole Black Pride thing uh, 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 created and entertainers and the whole economic implications of that? There are a number of things that uh, the whole idea of non we have no we have no official non discrimination policies on the book right now. So you can be fired in Georgia for being same gender love. It's a right to it's a mm-hmm. at will state. Those are issues that affect us each and every day. So those are some of the things that come up as pivotal issues for me. Mm-hmm. I, Darling. So, and, you know, when you when you talk about, you know, issues that are relevant and I think Troy hit it right on the head, but maybe we try to jump at the same time, but you know, the for, the um summit is a is a place where people can come and of course, we have some things outlined to kind of facilitate some discussion. But if you sit in those summits, you will see that people will raise their hand and say, well, I'm concerned about this. And it could be about what's happening in another part of the state or another part of the country. So uh, Troy hit that right on the head in terms of how the space will be used and has been used. I think that, you know, the ongoing kind of conversation which I know I get in trouble with um, some of my white counterparts, but I'm, I'm very concerned about this whole jobless piece. And, and I'm speaking as an individual. Um, and those people who will listen will identify themselves what's important to them. But across the country, I know that black gay people, white people, black people, orange people, whatever, everybody's concerned about jobs. And, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Well, how are we going to make it? You said you just come in from the donut factory. Uh, same here. And glad to have it. But yet and still, you know, you're talking to someone who hasn't experienced a raise in probably five years, but yet we're in this kind of turmoil situation. You know, health care, uh, you know, we have this big debate. That's an ongoing piece. Those are issues that are, are very important to black gay people, especially whether we're addressing HIV or diabetes or prostate cancer or breast cancer, whatever we're addressing, that health care package um, conversation, it's, we need to continue it because we still have people. The ADAP list here in Georgia is out the wazoo. People are not getting medication. I'm afraid we're going to start seeing people dying again of HIV and AIDS. Mm. I mean, well, I should say of age. So I'm, I'm a, I have a real strong concern there. I am. I think another big issue. I'm really concerned about youth issues in our community. I'm concerned mm-hmm. about these young mm-hmm. people who are just so overwhelmed with so much um, stimuli, so much information coming in, so much that they become so overwhelmed because they think, you know what, I might be doing better if I wasn't here. We need those voices to stay here. We need to address that right. they're healthy. That's another weak area. So when we talk about black gay issues, I want people to understand that while we say black gay, we're bringing that voice to the table, but our issues are very much the same as in anybody else's community, or I should not say in the overall African-American community. Um, I think people are concerned about things, but when you begin to look at it in our community and you begin to see young people who are committing suicide. I'm concerned about that young person that's being bullied. I don't know how many times I almost pull off saying, hey, don't do that. Stop that. I stop. I, mm-hmm. I don't wait. I'm not afraid. I just tell them, don't do that. Stop that. Pull your pants up, honey. Keep moving. You know, to let them know, I say that out of concern and love for my community. But I'm particularly, you know, those are just some of the issues. I'm concerned about my trans population and, and their right to work and to livelihood. And access. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. As you begin to look at the various members of our community. Again, our issues are very much similar um, to those things, but you know we kind of put a little twist on it because when a trans girl go into the um, to the doctor's office, you got to have somebody super sensitive. Whereas if I go in, they just might be used to just treating women. Period. You know what I'm saying? So right, you exactly. Just having the final, you know, information. I've gotten very concerned when I knew that the trans population, because some of them, you know, are so economically challenged at times, that they were basically, I read uh, one, one share with me that he goes to places like the Home Depot and Lowe's and buys silicone and pumps it into his cheeks 
and into his butt. Yeah. I'm like, you know, you're yeah. going to be killing yourself. You've got to know that. You can't. The shared of needles to do that and how they were transferring HIV amongst the HIV. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I get concerned because I want our people to know what's the best approach. What's the best way? What is out there? So I don't have to go to Home Depot and Lowe's. How do I get access to this health care so I can take care of myself so that I can, this body that I have, I can, you know, make sure that it's taken care of. So, yeah, we have a lot of um, things, but by that same token, again, the, the form becomes a place where, in fact, we can lift those things up, but more mm-hmm. importantly, we can talk about with some of the solutions. I want us to participate in HIV vaccines so we can find out what works. I believe wholeheartedly in, what, the mid-'80s when a whole a- AZT was introduced. I believe AZT killed so many of my black brothers and sisters because they hadn't been studied, and we were taking right. the same doses. So I believe we ought to participate in some of these vaccines, but I think we need to be educated because, you know, we have in the back of our head that touch that whole uh, Tuskegee incident. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, you bring up an excellent point with that. You're right. He's talking about, you know, the suspicion is there. So, you know, when you when you pop that question, you open up a whole lot. And I'm telling you, that's the reason why Greg and I are so committed to doing this every year. Whether we, we start out with a $0 budget, but we are committed to doing it. And I just want to say this community has been very responsive. We need some more responses, but they've been very responsive in, you know, saying, hey, what can I do? What, how can I support you guys? So on and so on. So, again, thank you for this opportunity to even be able to uplift just this much. Mm. Well, see, you know, well, thank you for accepting it because my thing um, – I I call this probably the most important piece of the Pride Celebration because it allows us to put into uh, into motion or at least uh, create a template or some kind of outline, if you will, a blueprint that will allow us to have vision for the next year to come. You know, I, I would I would like to for us or. Uh, to see the changes that were made since the last time we we met and and discussed these particular issues, you know who are we going to be holding accountable, you know for for this that and the other. If you're going to step up to the plate and say, okay, I'm an activist and this is what I do, I'm in the community to do this, then I, then there needs to be a checks and balance somewhere so that we can hold you accountable for what you say you're supposed to be doing that's going to uplift us and understanding who's out there and then um, coming to the realization that every organization is not a one-stop shop organization. That's why we're here. If, if we learn how to partner with one another, you take care of HIV and you dealing with breast cancer, see, then we can start to refer our clients back and forth to one another, which shows that the need is there, so that the money can still keep coming in for those who have five hundred one c three nonprofits. And I don't, I don't think that we all get that piece. I think, you know, uh, without forums like this, we end up going into it with a profitable mentality, trying to do nonprofit work. And I, I, I hope that makes sense how I put that, because I've seen a lot of organizations go in with the idea. Of uh, this, 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 and this, and we could get this money from the government, but then they treat the organization as if, um, you know, it's some kind of for-profit business, and then they don't take care of the the the, the work that's at hand. So forums like this are needed so that number one, we can see who's out there, and number two, see who's not out there. <laughs> okay. So that we, right. we could stop having that preacher to the choir feel, so we can know how effective we are with getting getting everything out there, how to go out and our network and outreach and this, that, and the other. So that's why it's important for this particular forum to go forth, and that's 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 one of my um, delicious reasons for having you to come on and to to expound on what. On what this all, on what this is, and like I said, I feel this is the probably the most important piece 
of the whole celebratory weekend because it allows us to put everything on the table. We all know about the parties. We all know we know how to let our hair down. We all know how to snap a finger, honey, and to get our twirl on on the dance floor. But when when it's all said and done, because that music is going to stop, your finger is going to split if you keep popping it too much. You still got to get down to the real issues. Money don't come rainbow, honey. Money comes green. And that there is the real power color that we need to look at because that's we got to find out how do we keep it in our community. How does our community flourish with that same green power that everybody else keep getting? So without that, that piece of it, then the rest of it is just frivolous. <laughs> in my right. mind, I'll put, it, I'll put it that way. You know, so that's why this is all here, and I'm and I'm and I'm sounding like I'm preaching. So let me ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about the transgender community. How uh, has this uh, this forum and this summit have uh, uh, brought out our trans population? Because a lot of prides, a lot of organizations, and a lot of things always have the LGBT. But a lot of times we don't see the T represented, you know, for whatever right. reason. Some are on their own. You know, some don't come out. We all know that. But then there are those who don't know how to deal with the community. And instead of asking, they just simply say, okay, LGBT, and think that they're just going to show up. So what has this particular summit in, in, uh, specifically done for the inclusion of uh, our trans community? I'll start off, and uh, Troy, you can chime in because I'm, I'm sure I won't think of everything, but, I mean, and chime in wherever. But the whole, I mean, when I convene a planning group, I try to, I work to convene a planning group that's rep, that, rep, that can serve as representation from the various aspects of our community. And on last mm-hmm. year, so in your hearing, um, well, in the last two years, Tracy uh, McDaniel, who just proposed Transformation Center, has, um, you know, been a part of the planning. This year I didn't have anybody from the trans community. Um, oh, and also Cheryl with Tilt was a part of the planning. But both of them had pretty ambitious um, summer schedules and some health issues, so they were actually a part of the planning. But we made sure that we had people at the table who were trans sensitive. I, me being mm-hmm. one, and, um, and even I probably forget Miko would uh, chime in, and, and so on. So, and as a result, we have um, on two of the panels, we have two, uh, we have a very young trans person who's going to be coming and speaking. Um, um, his name is Christopher, I think, Dowdy, D-O-W-D-Y, I think I've said it correctly. And we also have Sean Lamont who's going to be participating in one of the panels with the artists um, around media. And she's an artist. Yes, artist, yes. A good artist as well. And she, she's able to articulate. So we have those two, two people chiming in. But then we needed to make sure that we got people to the event. So um, Lambda Legal has um, partnered with the summit to make oh, sure wonderful. that same people, there's a, a, well, it's a half of a table, it's not a whole table. But at least we got a half done. And if I can get another sponsor to sponsor up half, then we'll have a whole table. But we're going to make sure these are the steps that we've been taking to to make sure that trans people are in the room, make sure that there's representation on the panel, and also in the planning. And I've been in, you know, right. having conversations with Tracy McDaniel just to, you know, even though we didn't have, because I wanted to have, have them there, but we wanted to make sure that as we include our trans population, that is, it is not in a token kind of way. And exactly. I, I, me, I want to make sure people understand that this is an inclusive process. And there's so much work that has to be done just within our community. And the only way it's going to get done is that we all show up. So I'm hoping mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. we're going to be able to, um, you know, identify other people, you know, I said at the um, press conference, you know, I could stand for me to be duplicated at least 20 more thousand times because we need people <laughs> all over the country, all over the world. 
people like you, Troy, people like Tracy, people like Cheryl, people like Dee Dee. We need them to be multiplied because, you know, it becomes, a, when you're trying to do this work for, like, some of everybody, it can become overwhelming, and then we run into different kind of challenges. So, you know, that's my commitment in this process, that it's not in a token kind of way, but it is an inclusive process where they are saying, hey, have you thought about this, and what about this, and, and just bring that piece to the table, and then make sure they're in the room. So they can say, hey, exactly. this is what's important to me, and this is what's important to me. And a lot of times, you know, they want to, because they have been treated in such a token way, they come out for you. I'd be like, don't beat me up, okay? I got you doing <laughs> So they come out right. for you. They come out for you. They come out for you. They come out for you. And I'm like, well, I'm working on it, you know? And I'm like, sure, right. I can't cover your issues like you can cover your issues. So come cover your issues. Like you wanna, and you know, I just want everybody to be nice, though, if possible. Okay. <laughs> Big Meech, one of the things, uh, one of the things that I wanted to add is that I wanted to uh, to give a shout out and some support to Darlene and Greg around. Um, I've been a part of the um, this particular summit probably from its inception. Um, and I've, I've noticed over the years, I've seen the room, um, our trans community call the planners to task and say, where are, mm. where, where are our people? Why is our voice not heard? Or this is the ways in which we want our voice to be heard. And also I've seen those that are, um, that are not Christian, those that are Muslim, those that are ecumenical and other faith traditions call us to task as well. And I wanted to, to, to recognize the fact that after every time that information has been taken into consideration and that information has been utilized, like so the table, the planning table, has never been a closed table. I've never experienced it as a closed table. So there were people who said, you know what, I want to be a part of this. There's always been a space for people to come and say, you know what, I want to represent my voice and I want to make sure my voice is represented in the conversation. So it's definitely not a one-sided conversation. I think the, the, the two parts is I, I've seen the one part where, there's been space provided. And I think for the last three or four years, Darlene, every panel that we've had has had some trans representation on it. Um, but there's always more space, not just in, to, to, to show up and, and speak on the mic, but there's opportunities to show up and be a part of the planning. Um, and I think <clears> that <throat> every part of our community that we not just become token in the sense that we, we just want to be seen if our name is on program, but we all have to be participate even in the part of the, the work that's a little bit more monotonous, the planning of the work, follow-up. Those are pieces that Greg and Darlene can't do by themselves. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Say that now. Okay, that right. footwork, baby. <laughs> that's right. Ooh. Okay, that footwork, that leg work, honey, that, the when you got to sit up there, do the fundraising and, 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 and yeah. conducting and constructing letters for sponsorship and all of that. See, a lot of folks don't understand that particular part of the process. They want to be heard, but yet real don't don't want to take into account the process to be heard. <laughs> How about that one? Okay. Yeah, then, now, let me just do this right here, uh, Big Meech, if you will. If there's anybody who's listening, I don't care where you're from. You can be from... Um, California, New York, you can be from Wyoming, you can be from South Dakota, it doesn't matter to me, wherever the viewership is. If you want to volunteer at Labor Day weekend and you want to have some have a good experience, then get in contact with me. Go to the summit page. Um, it's www.sbgasummit.org. Click on volunteering. And we are, like you said, it's just me, a lot of times it's Greg and I behind the scenes, but we have a wonderful um, volunteer coordinator and registration um, lead that's going to bring that information in, and we'll put you to work. You know, the, the planning is over. Now we're implementing. But we need people to make that commitment to volunteer after the summit is over. Because there's work Ooh, to do. Say that. All that information. Say that. Gotta take all that information, put it together. But, I mean, we're really serious about this time, making sure our footage is pressed out, and we can put it in the hands of people so that this, the, the information that is exchanged in the summit can continue to live beyond the borders of Georgia. You know, we're trying to make Ooh, sure I like that, that. We can get out beyond, you know, just what we do in here. If it happens, if this thing happens like it's supposed to happen, 
we will be setting the tone again in the South for what will be happening across the country. So, you mm-hmm. know, we're, moving to, we're, we're, we're gearing up now. We're, 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 we're doing our best. That everything is going to be based off of how well we can write that proposal. More importantly, how that person or that entity or that business or that agency, how they will accept that and respond to it. People got to get past the ego. I'm so past all of it right now. Till it's okay. really about the work. I got a day in the week or the month that I can go into my own ego, but the other days are donated to working in terms of community, working for my working for the children, um, in in, you know, in particularly in Georgia. But yeah, I want this summit piece to go beyond the borders of the Georgia area and and begin to reach out. So. We're having discussions with other pride organizers. We're going to be in conversation with the International Federation of Black Gay Pride. You know, so I'm telling people, get ready, you know. I just okay. want to make sure that we have forums where people can talk and talk seriously and have experts there. We do have leadership in our community. We have some of the best experts. You know, one piece that I did mention, which is the panel that you're going to be, um, you're part of the Community Speak panel, but I want to make sure that you have some voice in that whole media piece and how our messages are being carried out and, um, mm-hmm. you know, around accountability, you know, making sure that, you know, um, every piece, you know, we just have to chop it up. Everybody talks about Hattie, what's her name, Hattie McDaniels or Handy Daniels around her playing the maid all the time and how she mm-hmm. always got put down. But that girl had a car, a house, and took care of her family. And then her extended family okay. off that money. So I never should any shade to people who are working and trying to create difference. Because sometimes in creating the difference, it doesn't look like what you want it to. It can look very messy and it can be very hurtful when you're trying to plow through areas where all the isms and schisms lie. So, yes, people. Exactly. I'm calling for it. We got to bring it together. Uh, otherwise, as my church say, you can get right or you can get left. And I don't plan on being there. <laughs> well, how about that one? <laughs> now, Gina, let's go. Okay. <laughs> let's go here because I, I, I like that tone. And here's the thing, because I know we say that that not only do we want this to be, you know, a place and, and a forum where folks can come and to express what they believe their concerns are, or, you know, some folks are just going to flat out have a bitch sesh session. But at the same time, we don't want it to just land there on deaf ears. We want to sit up there and, and, and create solutions. So over the years of the, um, the summit's existence, what has, there, has there been the rise up of something that, that came out of, directly out of the summit? Someone said, okay, why don't we start this? And then you saw the ev- its evolution where, you know, folks actually galvanized and, and got activated and 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 had created a purpose for for that. So someone can say, ah, they were listening. Well, I can start off. And, again, Troy, you know, help me remember if there's something. One thing that sticks out particular in my mind is um, around the concept when, what was that, in 2008? Uh, when we were um, out doing voter registration and we had a strong voter registration piece happening during Labor Day weekend um, in preparation for, um, y'all help me with the years, but for for Barack Obama to come into office and campaign, you know, doing those things then, mm-hmm. the piece that registered, I, I got hit after hit saying, you know, I registered today. Thank you. I registered. Can you tell me mm. how I can I registered to vote at, at at the Black Gay Pride. Thank you. I registered at the Black Gay Pride, but I haven't heard from anybody yet. So, you know, still working that link. That was one piece that I saw happening. Ooh. And that's really mm-hmm. on a very micro level. That's as one-on-one as you can get. Yeah, um, on another yeah. Level, on another level, um, um, the hope. Um, clinics there through Emory, Emory's Hope Clinic. Yes, yes. Participated in an our summit and provided information. Couldn't quite, you know, she's always been a part, very committed to the process. And um, 
But what I saw happen this past year is she held two additional um, kind of like workshops to educate mm-hmm. people first the leadership and then, you know, what I call, you know, the, the regular people on the issues around um, HIV vaccines. She took care, and she's going to be reporting back. Most, uh, Marcus Bolton is going to be <coughs> reporting back what they learned and what they are going to continue to do around mm-hmm. HIV uh, vaccines. Um, there are some other things that I can, I can give you my own personal testimony is what I shared at the uh, press release, is that financial literacy um, was a very big piece. Mm. Um, mm. Me. And I still, right now, you know, but knowing how to budget and, and just doing, you think, well, these are things that you just should know how to do. Well, not exactly, because they're not exactly taught in school about making mm-hmm. sure mm-hmm. you get you one of them 501k plans and, oh, you know, all of that right there. So I think, you know, those kind of things I know um, – are happening. Now, our evaluator, um, Karen Anderson, who's a straight woman, by the way, we graduated together at Clark Atlanta University, and Karen is now working to capture that information. So what we're going to do is launch on our page, tell us your story, because we don't we uh. didn't have we bring an evaluator on. We didn't have that component in place where we gave people a place to where they could go and tell their story and know mm-hmm. what's happening. That you just con- you know contact us directly, and so you know people. Um, our very first um, group that came together. You know we we documented our process. We pulled it together. But as to put after Labor Day, it's hard to pull it all back together. My hope and my dream is to glean that information and put it in a booklet and say here mm. our here are the issues that are con- that are concerned for us. Here's what the experts said needs to be done, and then give that to Health and Human Services. Give that to CDC. Give that to the Department of Labor, whoever. Mm. Mm. Uh, so, you know, that's what I'd like to Oh, I'm excited for that one. I like that. Uh, any information? I don't know. I couldn't think of everything. Just think of something. <laughs> Pastor? No, I, th- I think you uh, you covered um, pretty much the highlights of it. I, I just think that there's always um, the, the, the follow-up and follow-through is probably the critical piece um, that we are we are definitely working to, to make sure that we capture both. Um, so, so often in our communities we do things that we don't even have audio or video copies of archives um, for posterity. So we're, we're trying to make sure that we have those things in place as well and ways in which we can keep the conversation going. Um, I, mm-hmm. I, I want everybody to know like these kinds of conversations are multifaceted and multilayered, and we don't leave these kind of conversations with one uh, cute cookie cutter answer. We're we're multifaceted people, so we have multifaceted concerns. Um so the the task at hand is to create a way in which we can capture that, build momentum and keep chugging away at it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. Now Pastor I'm I'm coming directly to you with this one. And that is being of the spiritual community you know we have we have a lot of tightness and a lot of 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 what's the word that I'm looking for um something clever but I'm just going to say just a, a lot of a lot of rough edges when it comes to dealing with issues spirituality and 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 um acceptance of one's whole ecumenical portion of themselves and then when we're dealing with politics and understanding about the lobbying and the this and the that and then see now that we have a lot of of news media and a lot of people who are so into wanting to make sure that church and separate church and state are separated. How does this particular conference benefit someone such as yourself? Who comes in to to rep, to be a representative of all three areas um, effectively? Well, I think um, I think Big Meech, that's a great question. We don't have to look very far to see um, to see the model of marriage that church and state should have. 
the the civil rights movement would not have been the civil rights movement if it was void of religious voices that were mm-hmm. across the line, both Christian, both Muslim, both Jewish, coming together. Because the truth of the matter is, the religious community or religious institutions becomes a very a strong part of our community, the black community. Everybody's not religious, but a large portion of our people are. One of the reasons why I, I make it a point to be involved is because so often. Um, people have this idea that God is not in politics or that God is not in cultural issues. And I think it's important Mm -hmm. that the religious leaders have a voice at the table and be seen not just in church events or religious events, but be seen in political events and community-based events. Because until we connect that, there's a lot of homophobia, not just alive in the the church, but alive in a number of religious institutions. And we have to speak truth to that. All of us are not preaching hatred from the pulpit. There are some lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, questioning, whoever, men and women that stand up in religious institutions every Sunday and but one, pay the price for preaching inclusion. And two, are walking out that. So my 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 my, my response to that is I think that we do it by example. We've got to first come out of the closet, and this is my own soapbox. That's my own issue. We've got to first stop supporting all of these churches that speak hatred to us and these religious institutions that speak hatred to us and then take our money and build bigger churches and have preachers driving in better cars. We've got to start supporting our own people that are making a difference but that are preaching inclusion. Those are the folk we need to bankroll. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the the, the mm. question often comes up, you know, how do gay folk, how, you know, how do we handle the issue of being gay in church? Well, they've been gay folk in church as long as church has been in existence. The issue exactly. is it's time for us to stand up and be counted and stop looking, being looked upon as some type of pathological disorder. <laughs> okay, if you say that one more time, yeah. stop being looked upon as a pathological disorder. Wow. Let me piggyback on that because that takes me to this question. In these particular types of forums, how do we make, and I'm I'm asking this, and and, and please forgive me if it sounds like this is an unnecessary question, but just like you said, Darlene, you know, folks are coming with that. Well, you didn't, and how come you didn't, and wow, you know, with the neck roll and everything. How do we make sure that everyone who has something to say and say it, be treated with respect, and that they understand that what they have to say is just as important as those who say it on the panel. Because a lot of times, a lot of people hush their voice because they don't feel no one's going to listen because it sounds stupid, or it sounds a little that way, or it may sound a little too personal, or it may, or it may dot, dot, dot. How does the forum, you know, handle that, or the summit, rather? That's the work of Troy and Carol. That's what they do. Right. I mean, they have a process, they have a process in place. I mean, they do their homework ahead of time to prepare, but you know they leave room in the summit. And that Char really uh, made a good impression uh, in my mind about always leaving room in during the summit to allow what he called organic energy. To, uh, is that what you call it, Char? Organic energy. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. To 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 be allowed um, in the room so that people's voices can be heard. And even though even though they want to take a punch at me sometime or take a punch at Greg, you know, we know where it's coming from. You know, it's called you don't get a chance to often say what you need to say or want to say. But, you know, we do ask people to be mindful because we have a time thing that we have to go through. But now mm-hmm. that comes to work, I believe, of Troy and Kara, Page, who are the moderators, and even our MC will play some role in that whole piece. But, you know, we put our cards. We let people ask us, put their questions down. We see the men. We try to utilize that time. And I tell you, when we leave there, there's always a need to have more time. But I just believe <laughs> four hours is enough for everybody to do anything. <laughs> Uh, one of the thing, another thing that I, I want to add to it uh, as well is that I think when it, it's nothing worse than going to a conversation and having it moderated by someone who's opinionated and someone who does not create a space for other people's voices to be heard. 
I don't mm-hmm. think that the opportunity, I don't think the goal is to come to a conversation and not have biases. I think the difference is just to come to a conversation and own one's biases up front. I am a black Christian preacher that's a gay male. That bias I have to own in the beginning. But when I stand as a moderator, I don't stand to promote my bias. I stand to create a forum where everybody's voice is heard. And I think we do a good job of making sure no matter what, what your opinion or conversation is, there is a place for that conver- that, that part of that, that component in the conversation. We have to own mm-hmm. our biases. So the first thing that I ask people to do is just name that. Bi- own your bias. If you are standing up as a part of a uh, community that you feel is underheard, own that so that people know where we're coming from from the beginning. And I, I find that people respect you more when you own your bias and then become ecumenical in your expression. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> we do it all right. We do it all right. Oh, yeah, baby. Okay. Yeah, everything. See, this, the the whole thing here is that this is setting the tone of what of what to expect. See, when folks, you know, my listening audience out there, when when they're hearing this, and uh, for those who are going to catch it in the archives, this here is something that they can un, they they can expect a tone to be set. So when they come in, they won't feel as though you know they have to be all suit and tied and stuffy. You know, or I'm being dragged in by my ear, you know, and this, that, and the other. This here is about a movement, I'm going to say, because it's about making sure that we propel ourselves forward and understand that our issues are real and that we're serious and that we need to take it. Our counterparts and our naysayers are only going to look at us as, you know, with the seriousness that we give ourselves. If we don't take anything seriously or do everything haphazardly, then they're going to treat it haphazardly. You know, and, and put no substance behind it. So this here, it sets the tone of what to expect, and then it also puts puts people on cue. You know, if you come in, all right, just make sure you come correctly. Come ready to do it, okay? Come expecting a change. They say that in church. Don't come up in here and not expect nothing. You're coming up in here to expect a miracle. Don't let the miracle be be the surprise. You're coming to expect it. The change or whatever. So if that's what that there, all of this is just going to set that particular tone for me. So now let's go here and, and let's talk about. Now we're talking about putting components in place, and now you know we're we're looking to to branch out and to make sure that the history of the summits are captured. Um. I'm going to I'm going to ask, and, I'm, and here's another obvious question: Are we looking to one day televise and partner with Logo or Glow TV, or maybe even one of the TV One or BET or something like that? You know, to where this is done live, or or you know, it's done and to where it can be on television and people across the the nation can see it, or maybe even recorded and it's streamed on YouTube so that folks who can't be there personally can actually be there still. Well, one of my goals that I've been working on, you know, when you don't have the proper resources, you know, when I say resources, this is what it boils down to. Either I need a student from one of these schools who is in who's studying that whole film and production world that needs to do an internship and um, to go through here, go through our footage and edit it, it's, it's going to be great practice work, okay, one. Or I need the money to pay someone to properly edit the footage that we have so that it can be packaged and distributed throughout. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, mm-hmm. and I'm the type of person, when I have something, I want to give it to you. I don't want to charge you for it. But if I don't have nobody to pay for it, <laughs> I've got to charge it for it because I've got to pay for it again. So right, dig it. in terms of documenting our information, our summits are, we 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 um, film them, and it's great. I look at it, it's great. We have some great cameramen and women that come in and volunteer their time. But at the end, they just give us the footage, and then we have to get it edited. That's a task. Mm-hmm. I keep wanting to do that job. Um Oh, do we want to put it on TV? Uh, do we, you know, do we want that kind of exposure? I think, you know, it's a discussion that should be had. I would love the opportunity 
Um, as a matter of fact, Maurice Jamal will be one of our panelists as well. He actually, mm. Glow, Glow TV mm-hmm. actually videotaped the summit last year. And um, that's the, some of the intent is to televise parts of that on his show. That's the he did it. Um, so hopefully as Maurice continues to, to work his program, you'll begin to see the right kind of people stepping in. Because, you know, it just takes sponsorship to make those things happen. And mm-hmm. uh, we'll provide that kind of sponsorship for the summit where it can be televised. Should it be on Logo? You know, if Logo wants to um, – not come in and, and, and see, when you work with these networks, they want to come in and, and kind of dummy up and dummy you down and all that kind of stuff. I'm not interested in that. But if they just want the pure summit, then I am. So should it be going in that, that, in that direction? Possibly. I'm not that messed up about TV. Sometimes I think that all that reality stuff takes something away from my conversation. The camera makes people behave a different way. And I want to mm-hmm. keep the real summit um, alive and well. So I think it's a discussion that can be had. I can tell you now that um, Meek's production, he televises the audio part of it in a year-round kind of fashion. So anybody who wants to go and go into those archives, pull them up, it's playing now, um, can have access to those things. So on, on kind of a micro level, we are getting into that. We want to become better still. I'm a social justice activist. I'm not That's a it, baby. Person. Um, you know, I'm not a techie person, and I have to recruit people to come on board who have those skills, who can share in the vision, and can help us make it happen. So I think it's a great idea uh, as long as it's, you know, done in the right kind of, um, you know, done the right way, the right kind of um, emphasis can be put in place so that we don't have, Things being lost, and you know, some people frown on being taped. I'm gonna tell you, they don't want to be taped, and I'm like, whoa. So for those <laughs> people who don't like being taped, I make it sure I don't invite them next year. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, they have their reasons, but I, I can't have that because I'm, I'm bringing you to the summit to give voice to something, and if you're too embarrassed, you know, to have your voice there, I mean, God, I sometimes, and now I'm having people sign release of information. So they'll know that it's being videotaped and it won't be, you know, stuff up and down. So I've had a little drama around that whole world as well. So that's when I always kind of like proceed with caution. Okay. 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 <laughs> that sounds good to me. That there sounds good to me. Now, let's give everyone um, the address and where this year's summit is taking place and the time. Okay. The summit is going to take place at the Malia Hotel, which is the, um, formerly the Renaissance Hotel that's at 590 West Peachtree, right here in Atlanta, Georgia. We're going to start at 11 o'clock. We have a luncheon. We have a dynamic speaker, Mr. Errol Folk, with the International Federation of Black Gay Pride. He will be our keynote. We are changing it up a little bit. We're going to have a mega um when I, when I say mega, you're going to have more than 30-minute panel discussion. It's going to be more like about four to five-minute panel discussion where we give it more time because when we go to talking about all of our trying to put, you know, our issues on the table and talk about solutions, I want people to feel like they have a reasonable amount of time. My grandfather said if you go over three minutes, it's gone too long. You know, anything over 15 minutes is gone too long. <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> that kind of... I keep that in my head when I'm planning because I'm conscious it's, we got a whole big Labor Day weekend happening. So um, four hours, five hours out of the day um, in the scheme of the weekend, I don't think it's um, too much to ask. So we will start at 11 o'clock with the luncheon. And people who are interested in attending the luncheon need to go on the line, www.sbgasummit.org, and register for the luncheon. There's a small fee for it. You're paying for your food. It's not going to to come into the summit budget, you're paying for your food. That's just what the hotel charge. I don't charge $10 below it. I don't charge $10 under it. That's what you're paying for. So I, I try to make that clear. I'm like, y'all making money off of that? No, we're not. It's, it's, I'm okay. almost tough. It's damn near a giveaway. So, but we want okay. to do something that weekend to make that happen. 
and, and the panel discussions will start at 1 o'clock. I should, I'm going to say this, and Troy, I didn't tell you this, but the panel's going to start at 1245. Because it takes almost 30 minutes to get that, that, that engine running. So if I have everybody there, I'm going to open those doors just as quickly as I can and um, begin the discussion. Because um, being on time is a tough piece for the summit. But this year, it's happening. I don't care if I've got three people to start with. That's what we're going to start with, and we're going to get the ball rolling so that we can make sure that we're getting the information out. And um, people just have to come on in and become a part of it. And we got some great um, panelists, I think, um, that's going to be on board um, with the um, with the summit. Mm-hmm. So um, I just wanted to kind of make mention of some of the discussions. We have a revitalize, and by the way, the theme of the summit is revitalizing our commitment to leadership, diversity, and community. And we're going to start off with our first panel that will cover those three areas, and I call it the community speak. And here's where we have um, our representative Simone Bell is going to be there. Jasper Hendricks is coming out of D.C. Um, that that young trans person that I told you about, Christopher Downey, will mm-hmm. be there. Also Bolton. Um, Big Meech, um, <laughs> Earl Daughter, Devin Barrington Ward, Ben Harvey, and Marianne Adams are going to be on board um, in a, a discussion there. And then we have Revitalizing Our Commitment to Diversity. And here's where Mandy Carter, Patty Sain, Charles Stevens, Gwen Rogers, a little young sister coming out of Spelman, two Spelman sisters, Deshauna Holy who actually received, like, um, national recognition from President Obama for her LGBT work at Spelman in creating, wow. um, like, a pride day there at Spelman. So she's going to be on board. She's a phenomenal sister. And then Holiday um, Simmons, who's a gender vendor uh, person but also works for Lambda Legal, will be lending her birth. And Paulina Hernandez, um, that's with Southerners on New Ground, will be present, oh. and I'm for one more person to confirm there. So the, our panels are going to be action-packed. Then we're going to have just a little small break so people stretch their legs, and then we're going to jump right back into it, and we're going to go into revitalizing our commitment to leadership and community. And this is where our Black Gay Pride organizers, as well as some of our promoters, are going to sit in a panel and talk about their vision for the future. Now, it, it won't be a panel of Alan and not their problems. I'm going to invite them to come to another table to do that. So here we want to talk about the direction of Black Gay Pride, of organizing in the Black Gay community. And so we have Dwight Powell with Sizzle. we got Earl Folk, Raymond Duke, Phillip Boone, Gregory Allen, and Tariq Jackson. And Tariq Jackson is a young brother that's coming on board. And I, if you saw him at the press conference, then you know he's charged up his heart. He is just wanting to work in this community. And I'm like, go, just get busy. Go to work. And, and right, check right. In with me, check in with me every now and then. And, so, and then our last title is Revitalizing Our Commitment to Diversity and Community, the Role of New and Established Media to Tell Our Story. And here, again, Maurice Jamal, Sean Lamar, and Dr. George Smith, as well as Gary and Avery, and Onyx Keisha will be on. Onyx, I think I'm saying the name correctly. She was actually featured in the um, Black Enterprise as um, uh, LGBT oh. family around financial literacy. So she's going to be coming. And so, um, and I'm still waiting to confirm one or two of the other bloggers. So I think I think today is going to be action packed. Our moderators have their work cut out for them. Um, it's a different look. Troy, would you say this is kind of a different look for our panel this round? Oh, I think he may have dropped. No, I think he had to go because he's, he's well, not in I'll my call queue. Yeah, hmm. he may have had to go because we both are working. And, okay. Um, yeah, we, we, you know, we take out our lunch time to kind of manage these things. And um, so that's how so he had to probably drop off. But at any point, the summit's taking on a different look. Uh, mm-hmm. I have a young called One Nation that were very instrumental in the Obama campaign. Um, they have they came and found me and said we want to work. 
give us something to do. And I was like, do your work. And so they are organizing, and which will be held on um, that Wednesday, the 31st um, of Labor Day. Mm-hmm. Before Labor Day actually kicks off, they are going to hold a youth summit. And their job is to pack it up, have presenters, make it happen. And so that's going to also take place at the Malia Hotel. And it will start um, from 6 to 7. There will be like a little mixer. And then from 7 until 10, they will be engaged in panel discussions with young people. They've got entertainment lined up. Um, so it's supposed to be a very high energy. I'm going to be there lending myself to it. Whatever they want me to do, I'm going to try to be on board. But I wanted to give them room. And not only to plan theirs, but I also wanted them a part of the planning. So they've been instrumental mm-hmm. in planning by Gay Summit. And I'm telling you, they've got a street team, a street outreach team that's working with my team. And y'all are going to see them getting out and making it happen. So um, the planning has taken place. It's implementing now. And so we're going to try to hit as many corners as we can. We're very fortunate that Outright is on board and has given us that space right in front of their bookstore to talk oh, to wonderful. people about literature. We're going to post our banner there. Um, you know, it's about working together, and that's what we have to do. Sometimes, um, it's not about give me some money. It's about access. It's about resources. It's mm-hmm, about people mm-hmm. making those kind of commitments to figure it out. You know, I'm not saying you got to go to church and do, I mean, you got to go to your job and duplicate this for me but I'm, and, and copy this on your copy machine. But I will say we got people who work in these copy centers. We got people who work in these um, TV areas that can come in right. and lend their resources to us. So when I get, when I get this summit booklet together, I got to give it to a printer. Right. That's going right. to You know, it costs money to do it. It just costs money to do it. So, you know, I'm kind of like from the old school. I believe there's enough resources. I'm not advocating nobody do anything illegally or do anything that will get them in trouble. There are business people who can say, oh, girl, go ahead and print that. We'll, we'll right. pay that cost because it's in our budget. We have a printing cost and we can afford it. We can do it. And I say thank you. And that has happened before. So I'm always mm-hmm. feeling the mm-hmm. right. I always to put that out there. It's not about you writing me a little five hundred dollar check. It's about you giving me access to maybe two thousand dollars worth of services to make things happen. So exactly, exactly. Back to basics, honey. That's called that barter system that we were taught the Indians and them did back in the day. That's <laughs> right. Barter. You're right. It's barter. Barter. And, and in mm-hmm. today's world, this whole economic thing, people, doctors are bartering, dentists are bartering, at um. People on construction sites are bartering. They're exchanging services. So if you want me to come and fix your plumbing, well, can I get you to fix my mouth? It's about exactly. the same call. You know, it's about the same call. So, it, you mm-hmm. know, it works out. It's something to be said. I think that the universe is calling us back to, even as, tech- as how you say that, technologically savvy as our universe mm-hmm. has become, still calling us back to some very basic around humanistic values of caring for each other. That's value it. That's it. Um, uh, how a person is seen, meeting the person where they are. And, you know, I can't help it. I'm a social work major. Just graduated last year from Clark Atlanta University, the Whitney and Bless Young. Bless your heart. Social work. So, you know, I take all of those experiences, plus what I learned in school and understand that, you know, in order for us to be, I can't be no greater than, how my community is. If my community exactly. is suffering, I'm suffering with my community. So, you know, mm-hmm. there's no big hospital you use with me. But now I am, I leave. I have accepted that. I stopped trying to get around it. I leave. And, um, but I try to leave from over in the corner sometimes. And I'm, I'm trying to really be a part of pushing people. It doesn't matter to me whether you're young or old, pushing people who've never done this kind of work out there. Give yourself some voice. Raise your hand, as you say, and, and become a exactly. part of it. Now. The whole weekend. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Well, this is going to be dynamic, so dynamic. I haven't had the privilege to uh, 
speak before a group of people in a little piece of a minute. So I'm ready to get my chops together and sit down and and um, expound with the people. Just, you know, let let some truth or my truth come across, and hopefully it will be in agreement with someone else's truth. And uh, if it's not, then we could learn how to hear one another and hopefully learn from that experience. It may not change my mind, but it will give me something else to consider. So, right. yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. Right, absolutely. I ain't trying to make everybody alike, but, you know, I okay. understand See? my trans community more. I understand my trans community more, and it helps me to be a better advocate. You know, I could understand certain kind of gay men. You know, there's certain kind of gay men that can't stand lesbians. But you know, right. and then there are lesbians that can't stand, you know, certain kind of gay men. And then there are gay men that have issues with effeminate men. And oh, you know, look at isms and schisms and gisms. That's what I call them. And we just have to keep working to say, again, we have to meet each other where we are. We have to see our values, um, recognize what I what is called humanistic values um, that people have that they represent for themselves. And I think when we begin to do that the word brother and sister began to mean something. The word unity and working together began to mean something. But when somebody can look at you and say, honey, you only work $500 for me. You know, you ain't nobody. You work. I, you ain't number 550 to me. That becomes problematic. Right. It is. Exactly. And, I, and I know people personally who make those statements and have made those statements. And I say, well, how much is my value? We sitting up here keeping See. your kind. Well, what is my value? Because since you see people in dollars and cents, right. and then it becomes a reality. So, you know, I, I, I really had never thought about it like that. I'm a social worker. I'm a community activist. Um, I'm about the community. I'm about people. And, and um, I'm serious. I'm dedicated to this. I don't, I don't like people to be treated um, less than. And I've always, I come from a family of bootleggers. We always had some money and something going on, okay? Okay. And so, my <laughs> grandfather taught us a basic thing. You never look down on nobody, um, you know, and don't get so big headed when something good happens to you. Learn how to share. And share. Exactly. We learned that in kindergarten. Are you sharing today? You ask the exactly. kids now, are you sharing? You ask them doing Labor Day weekend. You can ask that. You ask that question. Don't I ain't gonna ask it. You ask. It. What are you all sharing today? <laughs> Besides body parts and lip service. Right, a whole lot of cheese and grinning. Because <laughs> when I walk out of there, I'm a tired soldier. I'm a tired okay. soldier when I leave from the summit. I have to go home and rest. My partner says, "Just come in here and sit down." And and but I have to say, hey. But I got to go. I got to be there. This is what I promised. You know, because people want to see you. It's, I was That's so right. pleased to see you sitting out in the audience um, at the press conference. You know, um, you know, it's just like milk. It did, it did me good. It just did the body good. Oh. The mm-hmm. is there. And I want to say again, you know, welcome back into this process, uh, Big Meek. You have a tremendous voice. When I saw you at Outright, you weren't even on the panel. I said, I want him. <laughs> and I, I was, I'm a spirit led woman too. So, you know, I I hope I've made some good decisions in regard to the panel and everything that we say is it, going to be we live up to it. If you listen to um um Meek Productions and what I said last year, I said, God, it's coming to pass. It's coming for mm-hmm. this year. I said last year, they're happening this year. So Never underestimate what you put out in the universe. If it's a exactly. good thing, the universe will bring it around. And so you know it, it's knocking at your door. And you'll be like, wow, you came for real. I just want to acknowledge yeah. the universe for the work that it does on my behalf because sometimes I don't have sense to do it. But I, exactly. know, I get in what I put in. I get in where I put exactly. in. I try to make it do what it does. Exactly. Okay. Well, off the right then, baby, honey, we 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 going to do this thing this year. So without well, any further ado, honey, give us the the, the uh, website one more time for registration and uh, any phone numbers, if there's any pertinent phone numbers or whatever they need so that we can let them know what to do. 
All right, you can go to the website, www.fcga summit, S as in Sam, B as in boy, G as in gay, A as in America, SBGA summit dot org, and you can also reach me um, by phone at four zero four 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 one four eight two seven. And again, that website is www.sbgasummit.org. And I look forward to everybody being there. You know, let's, let's do this. I'm, I'm, All right. I, and, yeah, and, and, and so it happen. shall be. All right, then. And thank so you it shall be. Honey, thank you. See, please, we done ran out of time. I'm sitting there. <laughs> See, once you get Good. started, don't take nothing. It don't take nothing. And you it don't take nothing. This... <laughs> okay. 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 Well, all right, see, uh, Miss Darlene Hudson, honey, founder and uh, what, so, social worker, New Clark Atlanta graduate. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Community social justice activist here with the state of black gay America, the summit the movement, the empowerment of what that is. I thank you so much for your time and for letting the folks know what's going on, honey. And thank you for allowing me the opportunity to come on board with this because I'm I'm coming in two facets. I'm representing the big board community. Hmm? Right. And right. also uh, as a transgender activist, I have to help my sisters, honey, my brothers and my sisters, my, my tea children, because it's all about the tea, honey. We're going to dish some tea like that, okay? <laughs> We're big meat up there. So we're going to do it. We're going to do it, honey. And I thank you for that opportunity. So for those of you uh, who are looking to come on out to have your voices be heard, or if you just want to listen, to not just talk. Because a lot of us like to talk, but it's always, if you're a good listener and know how to absorb the information, apply the information, and then um, release the information and, and carry it on, honey, that is how the planet seed starts to grow. If you cultivate the seeds in the soil, honey, you always have a good crop. So come on out. We'll be there, honey, in numbers. And, yeah, we're going to turn it out, sugar. All right, then. Sounds good to me. Thank All you, right. Honey. Now, let me thank right. you, darling. Let me get you back to your day, honey, because you are at work. <laughs> yeah. At your donut factory. Right. So. right. Okay. All right, so have a great day. All right, baby. You too. I'll talk with you again soon. Bye bye. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I told you it's going to be off the chain, sugar. It's going to be off the chain. And we're coming up in there, honey, like we know it, okay? Like we know it, like we feel it. And yeah. So that there is that. Now, I want to pay homage to my sponsor, so let me uh, take a breather. I'm going to play this commercial right here. Where they going? Hey. <laughs> Are you looking for that special place to take someone for a good down-home southern meal and some live entertainment? Well, have I got the place for you. Right here in the underground Atlanta, we have the Georgia Peach Restaurant and Lounge. Enjoy Southern hospitality and Southern fusion cuisine. This is the perfect place to dine and mingle while experiencing a home-like atmosphere. Stop by and enjoy invigorating jazz and blues music with live entertainment on the weekends. We're open Monday through Saturdays. Lunch is from served from 11 a.m. until 5 p.m. Dinner served from 5 p.m. until 10 p.m. Appetizers from 10 p.m. until close. Sunday brunch, 11 a.m. until 5 p.m. If you are a government employee, military personnel, or airline employee, you will enjoy a 10% discount on all of your dine-in food. Located in the underground Atlanta, right there at Kenny's Alley in the heart of Atlanta, you have the Georgia Peach Restaurant and Lounge. For more information, contact them at 404-348-4300. That's 404-348-4300. Or go online and look them up at www dot dine g a peach dot com that's www dot dine g a peach dot com the georgia peach restaurant and lounge 
Southern hospitality, and Southern Fusion cuisine. Yes, indeed, darlings. The Georgia Peach, I love them, honey. Go on down there and tell them Big Meat sent you. Let me say a shout out, honey, to the Caribbean Boys Enterprises. We cater, promote, entertain, and provide special services with the Caribbean swagger. Island flavor on the mainland. Bam, bam. Mr. Savano T. DeMarco is the CEO and founder of the CABC. For more information, contact Savano at Caribbean Boys ATL at yahoo.com that's caribbean boys atl at yahoo.com or on facebook at facebook.com forward slash silvano t demarco s-y-l-v-a-n-o-t-d-m-a-r-c-o all right ladies and gentlemen honey thank you all for your time your love if you're in the atlanta area honey you can go pick up a copy of my book awakenings epiphanies along a spiritual journey it is now featured at crystal blue right there in little five points that 1168 Euclid Avenue. Uh, until we meet again, honey, next week there will not be a show, for I am on set in a movie called um, uh, "When What to Do When Expecting While Expecting, or something like that. Cameron Diaz, um, Chris Rock, and Jennifer Lopez are the stars. So we won't have a show next week, so I will see you guys in two weeks or possibly a special edition show during next week. So until then, honey, you may finish all of your crumpets because the tea has been dished. If you love me, tell a friend. If you hate me, tell an enemy. But one thing is for certain, this thing will go forth. So without any further ado, my darlings, thank you so much for your time and your love. And until we meet again, ciao.